I got my abortion, uh, the first one, when I was 29, 30, it was around that time. The place I went to was a hole in the wall, quite literally. It didn't look hygienic. There wasn't a nurse, so to speak. There was only a, a lady who was helping, who wasn't very kind. In Sri Lanka, abortion laws are very strict compared to other countries. But the health ministry statistics show that by 2016, there were 650 to 1000 abortions happening every day in Sri Lanka. The law that we have now hasn't changed since 1883. Women who are found guilty of getting abortions and doctors who carry out abortions can be jailed for 3 to 10 years under this law. There have been attempts to make it uh, legal in 95, in 2011, 2013, 2017. They wanted to include like women under 16 who are pregnant, those who get raped or those who have babies with severe fetal impairment. But as of now, now none of those bills have seen the light of day. Most illegal abortions that happen are very detrimental to the mother's health. This has become one of the biggest reasons for maternal deaths in Sri Lanka. In a 2023 report, the Family Planning Association said that women mainly turn to this unsafe and risky option because they aren't aware of other alternatives and available services. Uh, it's women and girls who suffer when it's not legal and they have to access unsafe services. Unsafe services means it can be uh, services provided by an unskilled professional in an uh, unhealthy setup. So because there's no standard and because it's not legal, women access it for a higher price. In 2022, the UNFPA found that 80% of unsafe medical abortions are done by married women who already have two or more kids. And these procedures can cost anywhere between 60,000 Sri Lankan rupees and 150,000 Sri Lankan rupees in Sri Lanka. To find this kind of money, sometimes women have to pawn their jewellery. Some of them are even sexually exploited in the process. Any hospital in the country, whether it is uh, private or whether it is a government, post-abortion patient can uh, get uh, medical help. Post-abortion care is provided by a consultant uh, gynecologist. To make sure that women can get post-abortion care without getting into legal troubles, the Health Ministry rolled out a set of guidelines in 2015. But the thing is, our health staff is still not trained to give this care, according to the World Health Organization's recommendations. This is because to qualify for the post-abortion care training, we have to be a registered country for misoprostol, the main abortion drug. The law doesn't even want to tell a man how to wear protection. But the law is telling a woman exactly what to do with her body for several years uh, when she gets pregnant. Traditionally, religion and culture have influenced how people think about women's health and well-being. This is especially noticeable when it comes to abortion rights. With women making up 52% of the population, this becomes a concern that affects the entire country. Sri Lanka has come a long way since 1883. Shouldn't our laws do? I think we must address the biggest elephant in this room, especially in Sri Lanka, which is the abortion rights. And that is not something that we are speaking about. That is not something anyone is caring to touch on. And that is why we are at this place right now. 